I guess in some of our cultures, we always think we're super women, that we, we, we just need to do what we have to do and grin and bear it and we'll get through it. But that's not, you know. This deeply rooted kind of belief that uh, our job is to take care of our parents and that we will reorganize and reshuffle what we need to do to be able to take care of them because they've done the same for us. And the, the belief in extended family. So we are Orthodox Jewish. And um, a very important part of Orthodox Judaism is the community. And we we're very, very fortunate that we live in an amazing community. Family is certainly your blood relatives, but also we had extended family. Our friends were our family, so to speak. We had neighbors that were very close to us. Again, we had church folk who were very much a part of our lives socially as well as in times of, of need. Uh, that was a big part of our culture. He doesn't have a spouse. He doesn't have a, he's not particularly connected in a very ongoing way with family. So the, his family are other, other gay people from the center and uh, people that he's brought into his life. Um, and I, I kind of fit like under that category. Several of the hospitals mentioned to me that we have taken care of differently abled individuals, but they do not understand that each disability brings a difference. And a blind individual is a culture all of itself. I guess I should first start with um, not having a whole lot of um, trust in um, healthcare in general. Um, I feel like, um, especially with Kimberly, that we have to continually advocate for any kind of, um, like for someone to take her symptoms seriously. But with other seniors that I work with, it's very different. Some of them really have struggled and it's been really painful for some of them because of this, this needing services, having to, and then dealing with staff that don't really understand what their culture, what the gay culture is, what these people have, what we've been through. There is nothing for Indian caregivers. There are small nonprofits that are coming up now that aren't necessarily for caregivers or for the elderly, so that if you need um, daycare, you know, or um, outpatient care or, you know, out, outreach services, but there's nothing for, for Indian caregivers. There might be certain websites that may offer something in, a, in, in Spanish or another language. I know that, or may have translation services, but not like something, oh, I'm gonna go to this website and find it. And I'm not aware. I would say there, there was a lot of stress and frustration around that piece for me of like people just assuming something, you know, based on whatever they're bringing to the table. I don't know, but kind of lacking this sensitivity of, wow, this is a couple, married couple with a family that's going through something horrific, but yet kind of assuming that that's, it's just a different case because maybe it's easier for them. Sometimes I feel like, you know, if we had more money, um, maybe if we were a different shade, um, my husband would not be where he is today. You know, if you can follow the life cycle of what someone is going through and then uniquely specify the kinds of things they may need as it relates to your culture. So, you know, we see this often, right? So you were just diagnosed, right? Like you hear it from the disease side. Um, what do you do now that you know, right? And then you get all of these things. I think you need another column or another pathway that says, um, what do you do now that, you're, now that you know and you are of Hindu faith or are Indian or are vegetarian or are whatever? I do think that Black folks need to know that there are resources such as AIDS, that can help in the caregiving process. And you should, you, should, you should welcome them to help you. Care partners need a space to kind of talk, you know, and, and to, I don't want to use the word event, but it's just to, you know, put, put it out in a space where you're 
comfortable where you it's as trustworthy like it's like and someone's going through that same situation i would like to see you know that they've researched and understand the african-american community that they understand what um that what is what I consider white privilege versus black reality. So don't just assume that I have access to X, Y, and Z just because you've asked or you're telling me you should know what my community has. So I think finding the quote community of the condition that you're affected by uh, is certainly very helpful. And through them, most of them, if you find out well, the majority are mentioning that they follow X advocacy group, then, then that's something. Timing is everything, right? And, a person, and everybody's different and everybody's going to receive that differently. So it really, I think, all depends on the approach and the timing. I don't think it's in a geographic place. I mm -hmm. think it's a certain point in the pathway of your experience. So I would have experienced them um, and probably accepted what they had to offer if they showed up through the through the phase of care we were at, through my pa palliative care provider, like integrated some in the, in the pathway of care. I would say one, if their information was in a doctor's office. So like, you know how they have pamphlets or things, you know, for resources if it was on a resource sheet, if I saw it on social media. A lot of times that, that would be great if the doctor's office said, hey, these are the top three, whatever, advocacy organizations and support groups out there for you. These patient advocacy groups have all these wonderful resources to offer people, but there needs to be some type of a link between them and the medical institutions and cancer centers, because that's the first place where patients and can caregivers land right? The hospital, an oncologist's office, a cancer center. That's where you start. It's not a whole lot of us that are these doctors that are that are over these groups, these advocacy groups that are in places where we can see them as employees, as members of the healthcare community where we can see people because when we see people that look like us doing what we do then we trust that right so it's gonna it's gonna be a complete overhaul um listening and giving that information back and really following through as a human not as a color